shoes and the mother of my house. Oh, what up, Larry Chen? What's up? Dude, so I heard you went to Lamar. Yeah. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Praise hell, praise Dale. First and foremost, this is the website. Yeah. Is this where your pictures are located? Yeah. Can we, can all we? All of the. How do we do this? All of my favorite photos are on here uh, and available for download for free in 4K. Damn. Just right? click any a photo and then it goes to the 4K version of it. But first time ever at Le Mans. I know you did your first endurance race this year. Yeah, you were there. Right? Yeah, we had a lot of fun. You especially had a lot of fun. Said cut, cut to some sea green footage, but not the footage he's talking about. For me, Le Mans is like the top tier in terms of endurance racing. And I'm so lucky that Toyota invited me to check it out this year. And of course, they ended up winning, so it was perfect. Let's dip into some of that footage right now. It's the day before the actual race, and I'm here at the Le Mans Museum. I'm just here for a little bit, just to check it out. But man, I can really spend all day here, just kind of taking in all the details, all the die cast, all the historic cars here. It's absolutely amazing. It's really something else to see this in person. Such a thing of beauty. I mean, there's just so many little details about it that just blow my mind that you can actually see in the models or in the pictures. Kind of feel like Hurt should try to fit this big of a wing on his RX-7. It's just cars that I only imagined in pictures and in models. I never thought I would get to see a lot of these cars, which is Honestly, that's the coolest part about this museum. This TDI Audi is actually one of the few cars here that I've seen race. It's like an electric car almost, how quiet it is, but it's diesel. Without a doubt, I thought that the 787B was going to be my favorite car here, but this McLaren GTR is just something else. Seriously, still one of the most beautiful cars ever built. What's cool about this museum is you could go there any time of the year. It doesn't need to be during the 24-hour week. If you're just a car nut and you want to just check out the area, check out the track, you got to go to the museum because it's open all year round. So we are at Gazoo Racing here where they will debut something interesting. There's just so much awesome about this car. I actually can't wait to see the streetcar version. What you guys probably don't know is you were the first one to give me a break in terms of uh, publishing my photos. First time ever, back in 2006, wow, in Drifting Magazine out of all magazines. Yep. I still have that magazine. I still have all of my photos bookmarked. Yeah. It was actually from a Just Drift Top Drift event. Yep, I remember. Like super amateur, uh, but it was just so cool for me for the first time to be published in a magazine. It, it's just so crazy. I mean, like, so now you work for Toyota. Right, yeah. Stayed with my passion in cars, and you're also passionate about cars. Right. And <laughs> Thank you for inviting me to Le Mans. Uh, Toyota also released this crazy uh, hyper supercar concept. It's not so much that it's like a new LFA, but it's beyond that. It's like a true supercar, which is pretty cool. So is it fast as fuck? It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be their Le Mans car for the street. We got Buzz Lightyear, we got Woody, we got some army dudes. All right, so when you're actually like at Le Mans, where do you stay? Do you stay in like a hotel? Like, If you were going to stay in a hotel, you have to drive hours every day just to get in and out of the track. All right, so I just wanted to give you a little tour of our living situation here while we're here at Le Mans. It's kind of like a temporary hotel room set up. I guess we're kind of living containers, which is kind of interesting. There you go. That's my room. Barely a bed and barely any room for my clothes. Yeah, it's tiny, but it works. It's home. Here's just kind of a little shot of my workstation here. Slash bed, slash couch, slash sitting area. Let's kind of go over some of the gear that I'm going to be using. Got my 400-2.8 machine gun lens. Got a shorter version. 200 F2, it's gonna be cool to use at night, especially since it's F2. Right now I'm just carrying my 35 and uh, 135 1DX2. So I thought our uh, living conditions were a little rough, but uh, I could not imagine camping here, especially in like a tent city. I guess I should be lucky that. During the race week, there's just so many activities outside of the track, and one of them 
is the parade that goes to the actual town. All right, what kind of phone is this? It's a butt telephone. So I'm actually walking on the parade route right now. It's interesting though, the confetti is stuck on the grill. This parade is absolutely insane. Everyone's just trying to get free stuff, it's crazy. This guy has a fishing pole out. He's trying to get some free stuff here. Dude is seriously carrying baguettes. So it's the morning of the actual race and uh, carrying all of my gear, all of my stuff, including my fire suit, helmet, all that stuff to the media center just to get set up early. Just to give you guys an idea of how much stuff I have to carry. All my extra clothes. This is your 10th Lamar. It is. Yeah, it's my first, so I'm the newbie. Say so what Toyota really wants is team atmosphere yeah, and yeah, guys yeah. talking to each other. Do you have any tips for me? Um, you're the pro. No. I need oh tips from you. God. What should Are I do, Larry? Me? Where should I go? Are you kidding me? All right, so I do have pit lane access from 12 to 2 a.m. That's great. I love that. Is that, is that a good time That's slot? a good time. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to be out there for that? Uh, not sure yet. I don't know. I know my first two hours, but I don't know uh -huh. after that. But I love being out there in the middle of the night cause, mm. because all the other idiot photographers are gone because they're asleep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not like working. Uh -huh. So the people that are actually working are out on pit lane or out in the forest. Right, right. How is this race, how is shooting Le Mans different than like, let's say, we're with Sebring? Because Sebring didn't seem like it was gigantic. You know, you seem to be able to get around relatively easy. Le Mans is just a different level in terms of uh, difficulty for everything. For me, it was just hard. There's like that language barrier. You know, I don't speak French. Um, plus, uh, they don't have golf carts. You could have a scooter, but like there's limitations on where you can go just because of the terrain. And a lot of the places that I want to shoot, it's public areas, and you're potentially shooting in front of someone's front yard, you know? So it was so hard to get around, and it, the learning curve at this track was crazier than any other track I've ever shot at, period. Hindsight, I should have went earlier and shot the entire week, like practice, qualifying, all that. All I did was I came and I shot the race, period. That was it. Larry going in raw. So raw. I am heading to the first shooting location, turn one. It's crazy how big this track is. I kind of just wanted to see how many photographers are here just to shoot the first corner. This is absolutely insane. This goes for a while. This is so crazy how many guys are just trying to get the same shot. I think I'm going to try to find another shot. So everyone else is down there. Yeah. They're, but they're going for that head-on shot. We want something different, right? No, You're, think, you want something different. Well, I think if you shoot from me, Larry, you get the cars coming out a little bit, you get much more of the gun stands, and you get yeah. much more of the people, and you get a little more of the atmosphere. If you look back to all those classic shots, the late 60s and the early 70s, they yeah. were all a little bit around the corner. Ah, know, okay. Like so many people on pit lane right now. It's kind of my shooting spot right there for the start. Just shot the start. Now I'm gonna head to the second spot. Everyone's kind of running to their second spot. Uh, start was pretty good. I'm stoked on it.
take a shot at shooting up that lane. Real quick, what is the deal with the helmet, bro? We all have to wear helmets, but they don't specify what kind of helmet, right? So I actually brought a snowboarding helmet and it wasn't really good because it's the middle of summer in France and it was really hot. Also, on top of that, I had to wear a really thick fire suit just because there's such a fire hazard on pit lane. People are fueling, people are, you know, pulling in and out. Larry. <laughs> pulling in and out. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you got that. Here we are at the airfield across the track. We're about to go on a little helicopter ride just to kind of get an overall view of the track. That should be kind of cool. I'm trying to get a sunset shot now. It's endless walking. My feet hurt, everything hurts. So much walking. It's completely dark now. I'm gonna shoot on the pits again. Almost 2 a.m. and I'm still shooting pit stop. I'm just dead tired. It's 4 a.m. I kind of have a second wind. I had a little bit of a sandwich. I'm gonna see if I can keep shooting. I'm at the Toyota Hospitality Suite now. Try to get some soup. I'm gonna enjoy my French onion soup while everyone else is sleeping here. Hopefully after this I can go shoot again. It's been a rough night. My body hurts, everything hurts, my feet hurt. I fell asleep at my desk without trying. It's been pretty crazy. Yeah, so this goes on 24 hours. Yes. Uh, it looks like everyone is wrecked. So wrecked. So how is it, like, you're you're shooting through the night, right? Did you get any sleep? Like, what did, did you pass out? What's the deal? I tried so hard to stay up. I just kept passing out at my desk working on pictures, and I just had to sleep. So I tried, man, I tried, but like, I feel like normally I would be able to stay up, but for how much I had to hike and how much I had to walk just to get everywhere, it was really tough. It was really tough. How so you stay so fit? Well, I, I mean, I can't party all night like you. Jeez. <laughs> I ain't got it anymore. Yeah, well, so I, I got some sleep, got up in the morning, started shooting again on track, and you know, ended up at the, at the finish line. Toyota one. Well, that's a race. We are standing in the middle of the track, actually. Toyota won. Congratulations to the second ever Japanese manufacturer to win. It's crazy how packed it is still here. I'm so tired. This has just been such a crazy challenge to shoot this. 
Uh, now all the fans are running out on the middle of the track. There's a line in the middle of the track. All about to get mobbed. Look at there you have it. Larry Chen. Well, thanks for coming by and showing us all this. Yeah, thanks for having me. Just rubbing always. it in our face always. You just can't get rid of me. So go over to hoonigan.com slash read. Yeah, read. Do that thing that you need to do more. And check out some of Larry's work. Yeah. Yeah. Motherfucker. Ah!